Joining me now from the Zero Touch Automation Congress in Madrid is Vanessa Little, who is Director of Global NFE Ecosystem Architecture at VMware. Vanessa, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. What exactly is Zero Touch Automation? So Zero Touch Automation to me is the ability to have large scale complex systems with very minimal um, touch, very, very minimal orchestration or very minimal means to, to make them work and make them go, to make them expand and do what you need to do for your business. And why do we need Zero Touch Automation? I think as service providers are looking at these next generation architectures where we have very complex bits of infrastructure that we've never seen before, making the investment into zero touch is going to be key in being successful. Um, as, as a lot of people have mentioned at this conference this week, being able to administrate these types of complex infrastructures is a, is a losing proposition unless you're able to automate the majority of it. By doing that, then we can finally make this a valuable business proposition. Otherwise, you're just going to lose money trying to deploy these complex infrastructures. Where do we currently stand regards to the development of the necessary technology, specifications, methodologies required to achieve zero-touch automation? I'd say as an industry, we're not there yet. I'd put us at about halfway to the finish line. Uh, there's still a significant amount of innovation and, and uh, both open source and commercial applications that need to be built to make this reality. Right now, we're seeing a lot of the standards being ratified. They're not quite there yet either. Um, everyone has a lot of brilliant ideas and great direction, but we haven't really achieved or accomplished what we need for zero touch automation just yet. What have been some of the major challenges the community has faced so far? The biggest challenge, as with any new technology, is going to be uh, all the early adopters have some conflicting opinions. Uh, until we really start to put these things into practice, we have no idea which of those opinions are actually the great ones and which ones are doomed to fail. Uh, now that we're starting to get our toes into the waters of zero touch automation and actually starting to deploy these in smaller scale and seeing what works and what doesn't, um, now we're starting to weed through some of those challenges. Another one of the challenges is going to be around standards. Uh, there are still competing standards bodies that have different ideas about how to do this, um, how to ratify it, the best way to move forward. Um, and until all those standards start to come together and be a little more cohesive, uh, we're still gonna have a little bit of churn in the industry. What still needs to be done to achieve the goal of zero touch automation? So I think the industry is taking the right steps in now that we're continuing to push forward with standards, we're starting to build some very viable proof of concepts in some of the operator communities. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the commercial vendors stepping up and building more applications and, and more um, devices to be able to make zero touch uh, a reality. Um, as we continue to do this, we're going to see it coming together more and start seeing um, cross integrations between the, the different, the different um, components as they all start to come together. Uh, the POCs are, are the key to make this happen, but eventually we're going to see someone finally take that leap of faith and deploy a truly zero touch network for the first time. And it's going to have its kinks and bumps and bruises. Um, and, we're, and the entire industry is going to learn from that experience. And how do you see the role of commercial versus open source playing into zero touch? So I think the, the marriage of commercial and um, open source in zero touch, it really has to be an and proposition and not either or. I think previously in recent years, a lot of people have seen commercial software as the enemy, uh, that it's too expensive and that uh, it's an old way of thinking that that open source was the way to go. But what we're finding in practice is open source is actually quite difficult to deploy and maintain and keep going for day two operations. And so only by bringing in um, that type of stability and supportability that comes with commercial software, combining that into an infrastructure that also contains very flexible, very agile open source software, things that are on the more bleeding edge of technology, can we really achieve these technologies and these, these types of architectures today as opposed to 20 years from now? Vanessa, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.